Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my first impressions of Diablo 4 after playing the uh, closed beta. So I meant to make this video a few days ago so I could still log in game and kind of talk about some stuff, but I think a VOD will do just fine. So this is basically me playing on my Sork. Uh, first off, I want to state that I am actually pretty happy. I can't say impressed. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how D4 is right now. It's definitely taking the MMO approach. It doesn't really feel anything like Path of Exile. It doesn't even really feel too much like D2, uh, with the exception of how dark and grim, I would say, everything is. To me, it feels nothing at all like D3. Uh, it feels extremely responsive with the combat. I've played a Sork to 25 and a Barb to 25, and I really have to say, when Melee has that really good hit sound feedback and the animations are crisp and it doesn't feel like... I don't really know how to explain it, but the, the combat feels very, very fluid, which is what I like. Um, anyway, let me talk about some cons in D4 because there are definitely some things that are that are potentially concerning. So uh, this is going to be tied in with what I like and what I don't like. So basically, uh, it's kind of hard to gauge what the end game, mid game loop is going to feel like, right? Essentially, after we do our main storyline and we hit near level cap, what exactly are we going to be doing? So there's like a hundred plus of these dungeons. I don't even really know if I would call them a dungeon. They seem a lot more just like an instance that you run where you just do an objective and then an elite spawns and you kill the elite and then you get a reward. Uh, I can find that being extremely repetitive if we're like waking up every day, getting the boys and just running literally like a hundred dungeons, right? So I would like to see some more depth added to those of some type because they seem to be a core part of the game. I will say one cool thing that happens inside the dungeons um, is that you can actually encounter uh, like a rare boss, which is Butcher, and boy, does he absolutely slap. Now, I'm sure once we're in endgame and we're scaled to the same monster and we're, we've been farming gear at our level, that will all kind of change. But in the beta, when you're not really geared and you're kind of just like leveling to just experience it, it was not really a problem, right? Um, some skills uh, feel really whack compared to others. Uh, when I say whack, I mean more so like the early game balancing. Now, to be fair, not to give Blizzard any credit, typically when I play a game that's more centered around like an MMO, right? Like this right now, D4, um, I don't really care too much for early skill balance because sometimes you have to, well, not have to, but sometimes skills shine a lot later when they have like synergy or unique powers or, you know, different boss circumstances. So personally, I'm not super concerned about the early game scaling, but for example, on uh, Sork, if you get Hydra and you get double Hydra from a unique, double Hydra is like absolute ridiculous single target for virtually nothing, right? You just literally get a unique, slap it on, you have double Hydra. And you can see on this character, I'm basically like a cold Sork, but I got a double Hydra unique and it just absolutely shreds and blasts. So it's just some, something to kind of like pay a little bit of attention to, right? Um, the open world exploration is kind of cool, but I'm not really sure. So if you've played Lost Ark, and maybe this is not a good comparison because I didn't play too much Lost Ark, but there are kind of like Makoko seeds, which are like statues of Lilith. Basically, you go around, you click the statues of Lilith, they're in kind of like secret locations, and you get like a tiny bit of stat boosts across the board. It's kind of like a completionist thing, I guess you could say more than anything. It's a little fun, you know, I can definitely see it being a, a break from the grind if you, if you want to go. There are also these... Um, Oh, I don't remember what their, their name is. I'm going to call them strongholds. Essentially, regions of the map are controlled by like this little red icon. And if you go there and clear the stronghold, then essentially like a town opens up. And when the town opens up, usually there's like a dungeon or two that opens up and maybe some quests. And that's actually pretty nice design, I have to say. I, I think that's kind of cool. They're definitely going to be limited with how many you can do. Uh, and you can do them in a group, which leads me to my next setting. Uh, setting. Um, because I'm an ARPG streamer, you know, mainly Path of Exile, there's this thing called group play that <laughs> I would love to do, but in a, in a game like Path of Exile, where everything is just so fast, group play is not really the same to me. Um, I can definitely see myself booting up D4 on launch and playing with my friends, and, you know, like, we're, we're not hindering each other, we're actually playing a game together. So in terms of, like, um, in terms of group play, I think D4 is going to be very successful there. Uh, again, because it's more themed around like an MMO more than anything. So that I'm pretty, pretty happy about. Um, something else is um, the skill tree seems really uh, shallow at first um, and probably will be. So here's an example. Um, you'll have like between three to four active skills. 
And then if you look at these little balls here, these are passives. So you have to take this passive if you're take like if you want to get one of these two, you would have to take this, right? And then you can choose if you want this one or this one. But other than that, that's all you got, right? So I don't know how like I don't know if making a build is actually going to be difficult at all to to any degree. To be fair, we do have a paragon board and equipment in general rolls like um, you can roll plus one level of skill pretty frequently, I'd say, once you start getting to like level 20 or so. Um, so for example, if you look at my mage right now, uh, I have nothing on my two key barn or two hot bar, right? If I found an item that gave me plus one frost nova, it would actually allow me to just put it on my bar. I wouldn't even have to allocate a point into it. Um, more so it gets even a little bit more cool uh, when you think about you can get a legendary effect for a skill that you don't even have, but the skill can be granted by another skill. So say you're playing a barb and you want to have like rally and cry, but you don't have enough points into it. And there's a cool unique that gives you 42% increased damage while you have rally and cry. You could find an item like boots with plus one rally and cry. Then you could extract that unique effect, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and then you now have rally and cry with that unique effect without putting any points into it, right? Uh, the unique effects, some of them are kind of cool. They don't overlap with the passive tree. To my knowledge, none of the ones in the passive tree are the same as like the actual unique effects. So there's legendaries and there's uniques, and I'm going to get this a little mix, missed up, so apologize if there's any misinformation here. So when you run dungeons, you get these things called aspects. And when you clear a dungeon, you permanently unlock an aspect, and you can press Y to open it. Basically, what that aspect is, is it gives you like a minimum roll on a legendary item, for an effect i believe um then what you can do is either if you find a legendary or you run the dungeon you can go to like the enchanter or the mystic and you can actually take the uh stat kind of like kana's cube in d3 right except it's like a consumable rather than it being permanent when you run a dungeon it's permanent but when you pull it off a an item it's not permanent right you can apply that to a rare item it turns the rare item into unique or sorry legendary and you get the effect but i think the only thing that's happening is the the grade is going up like the color right here's an example of like one of the uh the altars of lilith as well then i believe there are actual unique items which are like super rare and potentially build defining i don't know anything about that i haven't actually found one uh but that seems a little bit more interesting if there there is right uh in terms of like crafting all you really have is kind of like the d3 style where i believe you get a drop and you basically can uh, modify one stat on it uh, and i think to my knowledge it's very similar to d3 like i went to the i think it was the enchantress or the mystic again and you click one of the stats and you click reroll, and it picks three or you can pick your own so that's pretty much the same there is a gigantic paragon board that is coming out uh, that's going to be ideally some form of longevity you know for diablo 4 uh, i don't really know anything about it i'd love to create content when we actually get to play it um, so that's definitely going to be something else. Um, one of my biggest cons with the game, and it's kind of weird, uh, since I didn't play Diablo Immortal, I didn't really pick up on any red flags right away, right? Because I don't have a good comparison there. But I have to say the inventory, for some reason, if you've ever watched me open it in, in this or if you just open in general, like literally pressing the inventory button, looking at your character equipment and your items, it just looks very mobile-esque interface. I don't know why. Like you see all these beautiful graphics and stuff and then you just press your inventory button and you're like like right there it just looks to me i don't know it looks very mobile-esque it seems odd right not a super big deal just kind of like a weird thing for me right um you've got some nice quality of life with like auto salvaging or you can click magic rare all i mean that's all basic stuff right nothing crazy there other than that i would say um one of the other big highlights that was kind of fun with the game was world bosses. Um, I got to go fight a world boss and got killed like 42 times by it. Now literally it's like 10 times. Um, the world bosses are not, at least as of now, just like face tank and hold right click. Maybe when you're over geared, sure. But the initial progression on fighting world bosses was a lot of fun. Uh, they had very unique, not very unique, but they had very telegraphed abilities and they had like different skills going into like phase two. Uh, so that was actually a, a lot of fun. Uh, and I would say the last thing I'm concerned with is, and I think I slightly touched on this at the beginning, is what the end game loop is going to feel like, right? When I finish my, my campaign and I have somewhat decent gear and I'm near level cap, what am I doing, right? Am I just going to be like going around the open world, collecting crafting materials, fighting a world boss every two hours? 
Uh, am I going to just be super bored and have no content to do? So I'm just going to PvP all day and one shot people. Um, like, am I going to be farming dungeons to try to get like uniques and legendaries in every slot? Like, what exactly am I going to do? And I know they're not going to answer this yet. This will just kind of have to wait and see closer to release um, and or release itself, right? But I guess overall, I'd say Diablo 4 for me, you know, I I'm pretty excited. I I'm, I'm a little, little excited. That being said, I can't be fully excited because of Blizzard. I'm not like blown away or anything. If I had to take one thing that I liked the most out of it, I'd have to say I feel like they, they really did a good job on the combat and the, not the animations, but the combat and the fluidity, specifically, specifically with Barb. Barb just feels really good to play, right? Um, but I'm very skeptical to see the longevity of the game. I think that the game right now for the average person is maybe a bit too expensive as well. There are a lot of games you can pick up for a substantially lower price value uh, that you might even get the same amount of fun in. Um, if you're the type of guy who wants to go through the lore and explore the open world and do all of that stuff, I think you could justify the price. M maybe, but I don't know. I It, it seems really just iffy right now, right? Um, but again, I've already bought the game, so I'm going to go ahead and play it on launch. To me, it's kind of okay. It's I feel like a rare game where I can actually kind of stream, still get some form of growth, have fun and hang out with my friends. Uh, I find this being something, since they're going to be doing seasonal updates, right? I find myself ideally playing Path of Exile, doing, you know, a month and a half, two months. Maybe I have to go play D4 for like a week or two, um, and then, you know, cycle in, in, into uh, other ARPGs. Yeah, that's pretty much about it. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you want to check out some D4 content, I believe I'll be playing it next week. Uh, maybe they're going to be checking out uh, Druid or Necro, as those are both dropping. And they're probably going to be one of my uh, one of my preferred characters to play. So, yep, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box, except for Sundays. It's all tomorrow.